Ahmed Johnson was, and still is, quite a polarising wrestler. These days, in general, fans tend to look back at Ahmed's run and see it as another attempt by Vince McMahon to push an untalented big guy who had very little character or promo skills. I certainly won't say he was the greatest wrestler in the world, he absolutely wasn't, but I didn't really mind Ahmed Johnson. He was never a favourite, but he wasn't the worst thing presented on WWF TV screens either, especially in 1995 and 1996 when there was some real questionable stuff happening in WWF rings. Ahmed's departure from the WWF is also an interesting story which has been the topic of debate, but we will get to that at the end of the video as we look at the career of Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson was born in Indiana but raised in Florida. Contrary to where the WWF built him from and the name of his finisher, he was not from Pearl River, Mississippi. After a rough upbringing, a friend tried to persuade him to get into pro wrestling. Ahmed decided to get some training after two years of this friend trying to convince him to do so. Ahmed debuted in the Global Wrestling Federation in 1993 and he fell in love with the wrestling business. He was a passive fan before, but getting into the ring and having matches made him appreciate the craft. He has since said that his time in Global were the most fun days he ever had in wrestling. He got along with everyone and he really enjoyed his time with the company. Vince McMahon had watched a tape featuring Ahmed Johnson and decided to send him a plane ticket to Stamford, Connecticut. Ahmed was already in his 30s when he signed his WWF contract but the sheer size of Johnson was enough to impress Vince. Johnson began working for the WWF in 1995. Ahmed's debut match occurred at In Your House 3 against Skip of the Body Donnas, however his match wasn't featured on the pay-per-view presentation. He made quite the name for himself in the run-up to Survivor Series 95 when he slammed Yokozuna during a post-match brawl on Raw and at the Survivor Series, he done it twice again in the wildcard traditional Survivor Series match. Johnson has since alleged that Yokozuna didn't want to do any favours for Johnson and didn't want him to perform the body slam, but in the end, the two ended up becoming travelling buddies. It's pretty easy for us to look back at the total story of Ahmed Johnson and say, yeah, this guy failed in the WWF, but at the time, whether you want to admit it or not, Ahmed was quite popular during his first months within the company. This has much to do with him frequently being paired up with the right people. So for example, he would sometimes come to the aid of the white hot Shawn Michaels and also tag up with him on occasion too. He mainly got over by association in these first few months, which really isn't that bad of a thing. It would have been much worse if he was immediately destroying big names in single matches upon his arrival, at least in my opinion. So the way he was brought in and how Ahmed was booked really was absolutely fine. At the end of the year, a feud was started between Jeff Jarrett and Ahmed Johnson, resulting in a match at the 1996 Royal Rumble. The match ended by DQ when Jarrett struck Ahmed with his guitar, which led to Ahmed going to hospital with a concussion. Ahmed then went on to feud with Cam Cornette with a losing effort at WrestleMania 12 during a six-man tag match and another losing effort in a tag match at Good Friends Better Enemies. After this string of losses, Ahmed's future looked a hell of a lot better when he became the first African American to hold the Intercontinental title. Johnson captured the belt at the King of the Ring in 1996 after defeating Goldust. Most thought that this was the beginning of Ahmed's monster push into the main event. Ahmed has since said that his push at this point caused him to take a ton of heat backstage as most felt he didn't deserve it. Ahmed claimed that Shawn Michaels done all he could to stall Ahmed's rise in the WWF backstage and he also claimed that his car got keyed during this time by another unnamed superstar. Apparently a derogatory term was keyed into his car. 
Moving forward, at International Incident, Ahmed teamed up with Shawn Michaels and Psycho Sid to take on Vader, Owen Hart and the British Bulldog in a losing effort. On the July 22nd edition of WWF Raw, Ahmed Johnson would enter into the feud that he is most remembered for during his WWF tenure. Ahmed and Shawn Michaels had a tag title shot against the Smoking Guns, but during the match, Farouk made his debut and attacked Ahmed Johnson. On the August 5th edition of Raw, Ahmed won a battle royal to become the number one contender for the WWF Championship and he would get his title shot the night after SummerSlam 1996. It went downhill for Ahmed though when he was diagnosed with kidney problems by his doctor and he was forced to pull out of both SummerSlam and the Raw episode where he would have had his opportunity at the title. Ahmed was also forced to vacate his Intercontinental Championship which was subsequently held up in a tournament which Mark Merrill won. Who knows how things would have played out if Ahmed didn't have these health issues. Maybe the title shot on Raw would have led to nothing as it wasn't like the WWF title changed hands on episodes of Raw during this time period. The likely outcome to the planned Shawn Michaels vs Ahmed Johnson WWF Championship match would likely have been a run in by Farouk ending Ahmed's hopes of becoming the champion. But again, who knows how it would have played out. Fascinating to think about though. Ahmed returned in late 1996 and resumed his feud with Farouk who was now fully supported by the Nation of Domination. The two had a fairly decent match at the 1997 Royal Rumble but the feud continued all the way to WrestleMania. Ahmed Johnson teamed up with the Legion of Doom to take on the Nation of Domination at WrestleMania 13 in a Chicago street fight. It seemed at this point that Ahmed was forever destined to feud with the Nation. That is, until the summer of 97, when Ahmed turned on The Undertaker and joined the Nation of Domination. Ahmed was then booked to face The Undertaker at In Your House Canadian Stampede, again for the WWF Championship, but he got injured and again had to pull out of the match. Vader replaced Ahmed in this title match. So two opportunities to challenge for the WWF title and twice Ahmed had to pull out of these matches. You could maybe see here that the writing was now probably on the wall for Ahmed in terms of further big title opportunities. Strangely, upon his return in August 97, Ahmed was kicked out of the nation and once again he began feuding with the faction. This kind of flip flopping did absolutely no favours for Ahmed as by this point the crowd were indeed getting a little tired of seeing Ahmed Johnson as the landscape of wrestling was shifting and people were getting more smartened up. Ahmed has since said that he left the nation because fans weren't buying it but in reality fans were just really not buying Ahmed Johnson anymore. With this in mind Ahmed Johnson went on to Survivor Series 97 and defeated the nation along with his tag partners Ken Shamrock and the Legion of Doom. So this brings us to Ahmed's departure from the company. On the February 16th episode of Raw in 98, Ahmed was allegedly booked into an angle with the Truth Commission that would have seen Ahmed getting dragged up the rampway and given a beating. Unbeknown to the WWF, Ahmed's sister was terminally ill and Ahmed has since said that he didn't want his sister's last memory of him being a beatdown on TV. According to Ahmed Johnson, 15 minutes before the match and before the angle was about to be played out, he got a call saying his sister was in a bad state and he was needed at the hospital where she was staying in Florida. Ahmed told Vince he had to go, packed his bags and left. He did not explain why he was leaving, he just said that he had things to deal with and left. His sister passed away a few days later. Ahmed has said he didn't tell Vince McMahon or WWF management that his sister was critically ill as he didn't want sympathy and he didn't want to burden anyone else with his issues. He also said that he regrets not telling Vince McMahon the truth when he walked out on the company and he does still regret how he handled this whole situation. Ahmed reappeared on TV when he made his debut with WCW in late 1999. He was renamed Big T and for good reason. 
Ahmed had put on a considerable amount of weight during his time away and his ring abilities, that were already fairly limited, were now even more limited. He feuded with Booker T and teamed up with Stevie Ray to form Harlem Heat 2000, but Big T only lasted a handful of months in WCW as he was released due to ongoing weight problems. Ahmed has not been given any video game appearances or action figures since his departure from wrestling. Others, who have left the WWE on much worse terms, have been granted these perks and the side money that comes along with it. Why not Ahmed Johnson? Well, you just need to google some of Ahmed's interviews or check out some podcasts that he's been featured on and you'll quickly learn why. Ahmed has alleged that Vince McMahon and other superstars had issues with black superstars becoming main players in the company and, in the most basic terms I can put here, Ahmed feels that the company held him down. Ahmed, in his interviews, does not beat around the bush. He is very matter of fact and he is straight to the point when discussing the backstage workings and politics within the WWF. That being said, he makes some bizarre statements too. One that comes to mind is Ahmed Johnson saying that The Rock claimed that Rocky Johnson wasn't his father during a conversation with Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Look it up. So in closing, in regards to making amends with Vince McMahon one day, Ahmed said this. If I could make closure with any man, I would want that. As a man and as a Christian, I would want that. But as far as me kissing your behind, forget it. Nah, that ain't even gonna happen. <laughs>